The technology available in the rigging industry is constantly changing. And in this video, we're gonna share a new type of chain sling that can save you a lot of headaches on the job site. Welcome back to the Lifting and Rigging channel. My name is Devin, and today we're gonna to cover some information on a brand new type of lifting sling called the Grabic. We're gonna cover what that system is, how it works, some common problems and best practices to give you some great information if you're considering switching from your current chain sling to something new. Now, joining me today is Felix Nyberg, a global product manager from Gunnabo Industries. So Felix, first off, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Devin. And why don't we start with you just giving me a little bit of background about yourself, how you got into the industry, and we'll start there. All right, so my name is uh, Felix Nyberg. I'm the Global Product Manager for the Crosby Group uh, for chain and fittings, uh, hooks, master links, hoist rings, as well as uh, fishing and aquaculture. I got into the Crosby Group from the Gunnabo side. So Crosby uh, acquired Gunnabo Industries last year uh, about may time frame before that i was working here in the u.s so i'm currently residing in dallas and before that i was up in tulsa where gannibal had its u.s headquarters uh, i was working as the sales manager for western u.s and canada for gannibal at the time of acquisition and then i transitioned into a product management role and before moving to the states obviously you can tell i'm not from tulsa or dallas before moving here, I actually worked for Gannabo in Sweden, taking care of uh, exports for a number of years. So I've been in the industry about six years now. What problems did you see in the industry that you wanted to, to make this for to solve it? Gravic really came out when we moved in the industry from grade 80 to grade 100. And a lot of our components needed to change the forgings, either if it was just the markings on them and some needed to change completely just because we needed to change some dimensions. So instead of just reproducing the product line as we had it in grade 80, we actually went out and we talked to customers and we talked to end users and we asked them what, what do you like about chains, what don't you like about chains, why would you use a wire rope or a synthetic overchain? And what people really love about chain is the adjustability. It's much harder to adjust a wire rope sling. You can do it with a turnbuckle, for example, or you can do it uh, in a few different ways, but it's much more difficult than to do it with chain. And the same with synthetic. So the adjustability is really one of the main advantages with a chain sling. And the durability is another part of it. It's very durable, especially compared to the synthetics, but also compared to wire rope. It's a very durable material and in harsh environments and even in hot environments, such as a steel mill, for example, chain slings will last you much longer. So that's what they liked about it. But what they didn't like with it was that it's heavy. Obviously, when you have wire rope, it's just a straight line, essentially, of steel, whereas the chain, it goes around in, in small circles or, or links. So it's very heavy and especially at the top where with wire rope you have a nice connection with the Flemish eye for example. There's not too many components and it's fairly lightweight. But with Shane you had connectors and to add that adjustability you needed additional connectors and you needed shortening hooks. So there was quite a lot of different components up there and that's essentially what you lift. The top assembly is what you lift up to the hook when you're putting your sling on, onto a crane hook. So they didn't like the weight of it. and those components also made it more difficult to inspect, made it more difficult to assemble it, and also the bunching uh, up by the chain made it complicated to use. We came up with the Grabic system, and here you have a MGD, which is one of our top sellers, which is the integrated master link connector and grab hooks all in one. So instead of having about seven components, you now have just a single component. So it's much quicker to inspect in the field. You only have two load bearing points there, plus the top here that connects to the mass link. So it's very easy and quick to inspect. Uh, it's much lighter. It's about half the weight of a traditional setup and you don't have any reduction in the working load limit. With the Gravic system, it came around when we moved from grade 80 to grade 100. And that also made the working load limit increase 25% versus the prior systems. So you had an increase in the capacity, which allowed you to use smaller chain slings to lift the same weight. And you also had the reduction of the number of skew or components and the reduction of the weight with the integration of the components. So that all made it a much easier and simpler system that removed some of these uh, drawbacks that you had with uh, traditional chain systems. 
you have a lot of people on a job site. They grew up using what they had. Typically, they you know the purchasers buy whatever they are going to use, and then the rigger just learns how to use it. Yeah. How much training is involved when it comes from a person who is using a conventional chain lifting sling and then transitions to this new system? That's a really great thing about the system as well. You can make it uh, as simple or as advanced as you really want to. So if you go back to the uh, MGD that I showed you here, it's really even more straightforward than a traditional chain sling because here you just, it's super easy. You just hang it on the crane hook and you're good to go. If you need to shorten, it's you can shorten it just by the integrated grab hooks and you can shorten it either way. So there's really very little training needed if you're used to working with chain slings today to move over to a, a grabic chain sling. Then of course you can uh, move into more advanced additions to it such as the mid grab to make it more efficient where you can put it and shorten it anywhere on the chain. What's the big benefit of using the mid grab as opposed to just using your adjusting point that you already had? Why, why add the, the second piece of componentry? The chain sling I have here, it's about five foot long. Uh, that's a very short chain sling. Most chain slings are longer than that. And once you start getting up to very long chain slings used at uh, construction sites, for example, to lift uh, pre-cast uh, concrete walls in a, in a warehouse going up, for example, um, you need to wait for that block to come down. So if you're waiting for that block to come all the way down and it's at least 20 foot up in the air because it's uh, the chain sling is 20 feet up and it needs to come down to working height which will be about 3 feet high and that block is moving maybe 20 foot a minute so you're going to wait a minute for it to come down then you're going to adjust it then you're going to bring it back all the way back up again wait another minute and maybe you have 2-3 guys that are standing around waiting for this block to go up and down plus the crane operator and then you realize, okay, we need to shorten one link more on the left leg. So then you bring it down, you're losing another minute, adjusting it, bring it back up again. So with the mid grab, you can adjust it anywhere on the chain slings. You can actually adjust it down by the hook. So as you can see, it's a forged piece of equipment and you don't have any reduction in working load limit when you're using it. So it just mounts on the chain. You see one is already mounted here. So you bunch up the chain, pull out your mid grab and you push the chain through and then you just slot it into the slots here. So now the mid grab is on the chain, you push in these uh, closed devices, so you just push them in, twist them half a turn, push them in, twist them half a turn, and now you have the ability to shorten the chain down by the hook. So instead of having to lower that block all the way down 20 feet, you just slack the chain, you put the chain in, and then you pull the chain tight. And it requires less attempts of getting it right because you can just pull the chain tight, and also you don't need to lower the block down all the way. So we actually had a lot of customers that that uh, talked to us about how much time they saved, but then when you're talking to other people and they realize that it's a great product and they've stood there, and a lot of riggers have stood there waiting for the block to go up and down a bunch of times. They realize that it's great, but it's also an additional cost. So we actually developed this calculator. So if you're going to graphic.com, the first thing that will pop up is the mid grab savings calculator. So you can cl just click here, start saving, and we'll go with Imperial. We already have US dollar selected. So if you don't know how quick the block is going up and down, um, the average is about 350 foot per minute per single part line, or 100 meters per minute. So we're going to put 350 feet in here, and let's just assume we have five shifts reeved, which would give you 10 parts of line and essentially decrease that to 35 foot per minute that the block is uh, going traveling up and down. And then just plug in our cost here, so let's say $500 for the crane cost, $200 for labor, and let's say $200 for other cost. We have a 30 foot sling, and we need to adjust three times before we get it right, and we have, let's say, 25 lifts per day. So obviously you can just play around with this, and maybe you don't have all your five shifts reeved, or maybe you don't have this crane cost, or maybe your sling is shorter, but it's super easy to use. You just plug in your numbers, and what it will tell you is how much you will save per lift. So in this case, we saved almost five minutes per lift, or $70. And per day with the number of lifts that you do, you would save almost two hours. And let's say that you had three guys working on this uh, with the crane operator and two riggers. That's six man hours a day that you're saving and almost $1,800. So very quickly, and I mean, you can 
play around, you can adjust it depending on your need and your situation. But this is a super simple calculator just to show how much money and time you could actually save. And this is just per day. You're not just going to do lifts per day in many cases. You're going to do it for several weeks uh, at a site. So this would obviously be multiplied each day you're using and each day you're, you're doing lifts with the MIGRAB. So in situations where you do have a long sling and you're doing a lot of adjustments, uh, the MIGRAB is a, is a great tool to really help you save both time and money. I think the normal speak is going to be, oh, it doesn't take that long to adjust a chain. It, it doesn't take as long as you think it does. The thing that I like about this calculator is it, it helps you actually quantify how much time you're wasting. So it's easy to say, oh, it's not that bad. It's just a couple of guys only taking a couple minutes. But if you actually sit there and do the math and look at how long it takes you to get the block down, to get everything adjusted, send it back up, go back and fix it again. I think that there's a lot of value to this calculator just to help people get a true assessment of exactly how much time and money they're wasting that can be solved if they maybe look at something that's a little different than what they've been using for the last couple of years. I'd like to switch a little bit into maybe some some problem areas. Where are situations or environments or maybe even job sites where you know these types of chain systems don't really work as well as they do in like other applications? All types of things have their, their benefits and drawbacks. And as with any chain system, uh, it will still be heavy. It is still a lot of metal. And especially as you go up in sizes, uh, it, it will still be heavier than your synthetic slings. Um, Another issue is that uh, if you have sensitive surfaces such as a painted surface or you have stainless steel, for example, or pipes, uh, the chain is durable and it's usually pretty hard so it can actually damage uh, sensitive loads, which is another drawback. Um, as far as chain systems go, it, it is a very, very versatile system and flexible. Um, and it is very straightforward to use. However, once you start getting into these more uh, advanced rigging techniques, such as using the mid grab or using the flex leg, which which is another even further advanced and different types of hitches, um, it, it can get more complicated. And if you have unexperienced riggers, uh, it might not be the best system for them. Um, or you might have to think once or twice before you, you put it in the hand or just provide more training specifically in the realm of like training and rigging it up, you know, what are you seeing out there for people that might be making some mistakes or common problems with it? Just as you would have with any rigging, that they rig it incorrectly or they're using the wrong angles or, or using the wrong uh, working load limits. Uh, and also with the more advanced types of hitches that you can do with the uh, Grabic system and use the different components for greater flexibility, such as uh, using a, a seal as an end fitting for a choker, for example. Uh, there might be people that just either don't realize how much they need to derate it when they're doing a choker, even though it's a, a choke fitting. Um, so just being uh, aware of that the fittings look a little bit different, the slings look a little bit different, and you, have, you still have to be aware of, of uh, how much you can lift with it and rig it properly, obviously. And obviously. master link sizing, for example. So one of the big benefits with the using a CLS and then fitting is also that you can rig it back up to the master link, but then you need to make sure that you have a master link and a sling that is uh, appropriate for that kind of load, or else that you don't use the full true basket capacity. Is there an issue with like mixing these technologies together, like grabbing your MIG grab and throwing it on just a different chain sling that they have on the work site? So the Gravic really is a system. It's designed and developed to work with the Gravic chain and the Gravic components and the Gravic master links. It's easy to make sure that you have the right components if you have an all Gravic system. You can look at a master link, look at the nomenclature, look at the hooks, and you can all verify that it's the right components and uh, it should all go together and they all have the same working load limit. Now, if you do introduce other types of chain, you introduce other types of components uh, or fittings, then of course, some of it will work together because products are designed to standard and for example, the chain standard regulate which size a 3H chain is. Now, we haven't tested with all the other competitors chains that are out there and there is tolerances within those standards. So it could end up with that you're using the MIG grab or using one of our grab hooks with a different type of chain and it will not sit properly and you can actually get a, a reduction in the 
the braking load. Okay, and so that's a really, really good just word of warning. All these systems are manufactured to a specific design. You know, the the ratios and everything. It's it's important that all that stuff is followed. But if you're just mixing product in the field, there's a really good opportunity for you to make a mistake where you're mixing something that shouldn't be part of that system. So um, I think that's a really good point as well. Is if you can keep it all in the graphic family, you're gonna have success because everything is from the same manufacturer. Once you start mixing different things because you have them available, you might run into some issues. So make sure that you're doing your research, especially the end of the manufacturer specifications before you rig anything in a weird or unconventional way, just because you're trying to get this thing knocked out. Uh, there's a lot of those like, you know, hey, we're getting ready to take lunch, knock that out real quick, let's roll. Um, huge area of opportunity for mistakes in that. Yeah, that and just to add to that, um, the, the risk of liability. So if you're staying with one manufacturer, you have one manufacturer that's uh, carrying the liability in case of in case of something would go wrong um, but if you're mixing somebody's chain with the mid grabs and then some other hooks then you now have a, a bunch of different manufacturers uh, in this uh, liability case and and that could also cause both confusion and and be problematic and cause the process to be much more longer than it needed to be